Hello everyone. So let us start our discussion uh, from the entities and the relationships. Uh, so basically we were discussing that whenever we intend to design the conceptual model, which basically is the entity relationship diagram for a database, the first thing that we uh, need to identify are the entities and the second thing that we identify are the relationships. And we discussed the example of relationship in our previous uh, part of, of the lecture. Uh, so uh, a very important thing uh, uh, that, that I think is necessary to discuss before I start the next con uh, concept of attribute, that is uh, uh, whenever you are tasked to design uh, a data layer of an information system, uh, never ever uh, try to uh, model the relationships uh, based upon your own perception. Uh, like you cannot not assume the relationships at your own. Normally we assume some relationships based upon the generic practices, but uh, it, it is not recommended to do that because these things are uh, dependent upon the scenarios and the organizations. Okay, For example, um, in the example that I uh, gave to you while, while we were discussing the relationship in the previous part, um, I gave you the example of, of a classroom and I told you that there are two types of relationships, uh, relationships which are there uh, in, in the teaching process and they are that a faculty member is teaching uh, a subject. So teaching is a relationship and similarly uh, the students, they are learning uh, the subject so that learning is also a relationship. Okay, but uh, we should be careful on it, it, it should not be based upon our own perception that generally a teacher teaches a course and students learn a course. No, it should what it should be based upon the organization. If this is the case in the organization for which we are modeling uh, that, uh, that, that, that database, then we should only uh, uh, model that relationship as a relationship. Another important thing about relationships is that in databases, the word relation and relationship. These are totally different things. Okay, relationship is, is basically the association between entities, uh, between entity types or entity instances, uh, but a relation is a different thing. A relation basically is a table with some special uh, specialized attributes and we shall be discussing this thing in future. So now we are going to start uh, uh, the concept of attribute. Okay, uh, basically these attributes uh, are used to represent the characteristics or properties of entity or relationship. Uh, so let's try to understand the attributes with the help of uh, attributes of entities first. Then we shall extend the concept uh, to apply it on uh, relationships as well. Uh, but to keep it simple, let us try to just try to understand this concept with the help of an example. So. Uh, uh, entities basically whenever we intend to represent a group or a type or a class or an entity in the database uh, we do that with the help of the representation of the characteristics that we discussed in the metadata so the characteristics or the uh, uh, or the properties of uh, a class or uh, an in, uh, or an entity or a type they are referred to as an uh, as attributes in in database. For example, if we uh, take a real world example, for example, let's let's continue the same example. For example, we are modeling, we are trying to model a database for a classroom, okay? And we have identified the faculty as uh, uh, as an entity type. So uh, we now we need to identify the properties of faculty, okay? So the properties of faculty can be uh, with the help of which this group would be recognized on the basis of which uh, on the basis of which we can say that this group is uh, a different group. It's a complete group and those properties can be, for example, the name of that faculty member, the age of that faculty member, the, 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 the pay scale and the qualification and specialization and things like that. So these all so, so, so this group of properties with the help of which we can identify this group separately this group of properties is known as attributes in the entity relationship modeling. So uh, if we uh, see the same concept in the object oriented paradigm, uh, these properties, they are represented with the help of the member variables of a class. Okay, so for example, there is a real world concept. Let's take the same example. So for example, this, uh, uh, for example, we are modeling the classroom and faculty has been modeled as, as a class. So all of the, uh, 
properties or characteristics of faculty they would be implemented as uh, the member variables of that particular class for example uh, if for example we are coding in c sharp so we will write uh, the class name as class faculty and the member variables as string name uh, string age uh, or float uh, or age or string address and string cell number and and so on so this is uh, uh, how we uh, model uh, the characteristics or properties uh, in in object oriented paradigm and in the database system these properties are characteristics they are modeled as as attributes later on these attributes uh, they basically correspond with the fields or the columns of a table but that we shall uh, discuss in our upcoming uh, parts okay now we are going to discuss that what should and what should not be an entity type so uh, according to hofer uh, any object that has uh, many that that basically consists of many instances in the database that should be modeled as an entity an object that will be composed of multiple attributes should be modeled as an entity and an object that basically we are trying to model that should be modeled as an entity uh, but at the same time hofer says that a user of the database that should not be modeled as as an entity and similarly an output of the database system should not be modeled at an, as an uh, entity uh, but um, I would add something over here, and that is uh, a user of the database uh, definitely should not should not be modeled if we are not interested in storing the user's data. Then yes, it is perfectly fine that if the client organization or if the user is not interested to get the data stored about the users of the database system, then yes, it is fine. We should not model the user as an entity. But what if uh, the client organization uh, wants to store the data of all of the users of the database in that particular case user would be modeled as an entity for example they are interested uh, to store the user ids the passwords and other information of of uh, a user so that would be modeled it has to be modeled as an entity and similarly uh, if we plan we are planning to generate some of the reports out of the information system that we are um, developing then there is no need uh, uh, to to uh, model the, those reports as entities because they would be generated on runtime. But if we also want to store some data about the created reports, for example, uh, let's uh, let's take an example of, for example, payslip. Okay, let's suppose a payslip is generated out of a database that we are trying to design. Uh, if that is the, if there is no requirement of storing that uh, data about that generated payslip then that's perfectly fine uh, there is no need of modeling that uh, generated report as an entity but for example uh, uh, a user has a requirement of storing the generated payslips information as well okay for example the the, the user says that uh, whenever someone generates a pay bill from the database who has generated that data has to be logged when that pay bill has been generated that has been that is also pretty to be logged and similarly uh, is that the original pay slip or is that a duplicate pay slip this uh, data is also to be stored so now in this particular case the report although it's a report but it would be modeled as an uh, entity type so here is an example so um, uh, prior and expense report they should not be modeled as an entity uh, if if we are not interested to store the data about that but if we are interested to store the data of prior and the expense report generated then yes then we should model these and uh, entity types so next uh, there is uh, some something more on the attributes uh, we have uh, so far we have discussed what the uh, attributes are so now we are going to discuss uh, the classifications of attributes so an important thing about attribute that i will uh, want to add over here is that as i told you that the two entity classes or two entity types they are separated on the basis of groups of attributes they have got for example faculty member has a separate group of attributes like uh, name and age and uh, basic pay scale for example and and the qualification and for example specialization but at the same time the other group which is there for example students are sitting there and they belong to the student entity type that we have identified at the same time that group has got a different group of attributes for example a student has a registration number a student has a date of admission a student has for example uh, majors minors and, and and things like that 
although some of the attributes they are common but there are attributes which are different so based upon this different difference of attributes uh, we are separating these two classes and at the same time um, uh, the instances of uh, any uh, specific uh, entity type for example uh, students instances they will be distinguished based upon the values of these attributes okay for example uh, if there are two students they, they may have uh, different names uh, and similarly they may have different addresses uh, at least one uh, one uh, of the attribute has to be have different values for example at least uh, registration numbers of those two students they they, 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 they will be different they must be different uh, so they are distinguished based upon the difference of values of, of the attributes. So this was an important thing that I wanted to add over here. Uh, now we are going to discuss the, some of the classification um, of the uh, attributes, some types of the attributes based upon different criterion. So the first classification is there are some required and there are some optional attributes. Uh, the required attributes are whose values are required in order to create an instance of an entity type. Okay, for example, let's take the same example of a classroom. So for example, if we intend to create an instance of a faculty member, that means in, in terms of databases, we want to add data of a new faculty member. So we, we will have to define that which values are necessary in order to, and which uh, values uh, have to be there in order to create or in order to store the data of a faculty member. Okay, so we can define, for example, we, def we, we define that at least uh, the employee number and name and uh, for example, age, for example, these attributes, the values for these attributes have to have to be there in order to save uh, the data. Uh, the rest of the values, they can be provided later on, but in order to create the instance, in order to add the record to the database these values are to be there so these attributes they would be required attributes and the optional attributes all other attributes whose values can be skipped uh, at the point uh, at the time when the instance is being created or when we are adding that data as a new uh, uh, object to to the database so at that particular time if we can skip uh, providing the values to those attributes they would be referred to as optional attributes Another classification is a simple and a composite attribute. So we can have uh, an attribute uh, to store a single value or we can have an attribute which further consists of sub attributes. OK, and it totally depends upon the perception and the design. OK, for example, we can define name in order to store name of a student or faculty and we can also uh, uh, define first and last names okay so it is totally dependent upon our design okay so for example if name is modeled as name then it would be a simple attribute but at the same time if we are modeling the name in two parts for example we are storing first and the last name we are using these two attributes in order to store the name so basically it would be a composite attribute so whenever for storing value against one attribute if we define sub attributes then those sub attributes are referred to as composite attributes and yes it is totally scenario a business process organization perception and design dependent thing it is it is the designer a designer's choice definitely uh, in consultancy with the client uh, to to use simple or composite attribute against uh, against uh, an attribute okay uh, like i gave you example of, of name so name can be stored as simple and at the same time it can be stored as uh, a composite attribute similarly for example there there is address for example there is home address so home address can be stored as a simple attribute and at the same time home address can be stored as a composite attribute which is we can divide the home address in house number street number um district and 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 things like that so uh, it is totally dependent on on uh, on the designer uh, that uh, which way he chooses in order to store uh, uh, that address um, so um, I, I'll stop over here because uh, uh, I, I'm trying to uh, make 15 minutes clips so uh, we shall be discussing the uh, single valued and uh, multiple uh, multi valued attributes in our uh, next part of, of the lecture. So, thank you very much.